beautiful job. What a beautiful job you do. Thank you for the gift of your music to the parish as well. Your organization. Well, I would like to sing a very special song for a very special person. And while I was working all week, there was a man that was celebrating last Tuesday, 25 years, his commitment to the Lord. He was your pastor. So I'd like to sing this song for Father, because I know that he has a tremendous love for the Blessed Mother. And it's a song from Ireland. So Father, Lady of Nam, Queen of Ireland.
Is your mic on? My mic, I don't know. I yeah. thank you very much. I'm inspired by this song. Well, 25 years my favorite song. What a beautiful, beautiful gift. Yeah, that's right. why I visited it. Knock. Uh, knock. And do you know what was lovely about that apparition file? Because every year I go. Um, what's lovely about that apparition is that it's actually one of the, known as one of the Eucharistic apparitions of Our Lady. Because when she appeared, it was the child of the Lamb, Joseph, and the Lamb of God. The Lamb representing the Eucharist. So it's at the altar. Yes. At the altar. So it was the very, of all the apparitions, whether it's Lourdes, Fatima, you know, Metagoria. Um, God bless, love. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I knew you had to go, love. I have your car waiting outside the door. It's at 65 degrees. It's been running for a while. <laughs> But anyway, um, but it's a lovely, lovely location. And if ever you go, this fabulous, uh, and although the apparition was on the gable end of the church, there was not a word spoken by her lady. And it wasn't because she couldn't get a word in edgeways with the Irish people. <laughs> it was just the fact that it was a very, very powerful. And today, there's over three to four million people that go to knock. And it's a very powerful, powerful place. But I'm delighted to be able to sing it for you tonight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am also joined today by a wonderful guest. And um, I met John many years ago, and we've been working together for a number of years now. And John, in and of himself, is indeed a concert pianist. And although he has a number of recordings, he is one of us here today. And um, I would like you to welcome John. He's from Chicago, so maybe I'm taking him out of Chicago across the country. So he's home, and I'm out of town. So he gets to see his wife every night, and I just have to hang out with Jim. Which has been a beautiful experience. Which has been a beautiful experience. But um, uh, John um, has been, you know, with us. And we've we've been in Carnegie Hall together. We've been in Kennedy Center together. Uh, it's really been quite a great, great journey. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to please. He's known as 88 Keys around the world. Please welcome Mr. John Paul Hamlin.
Before I um, leave you tonight, I just want to thank you for your presence here and making it a point to be here. I would also just like to thank all the people who made me feel so welcome from the food. The first thing that Sister said to me this morning was not good morning, would you like to come a coffee? <laughs> and that was the second time I ever responded to my deacon who came to me and said, come on and have breakfast. And then Father said, come on and have breakfast. <laughs> if the word got out about how good this parish was, you'd have ten priests over here. <laughs> this is the best kept secret. So we'll keep it that way. It's wonderful. For those of you who um, want to know more about the foundation, and one or two people have met me and just said, look, how can I help? I said, look, uh, you can always go on my website, markforest.com. You can always go on wheatlandfarm.org. Okay, so it's taken the family foundation, but uh, you can link in either way. And, you know, even if it is $5, $10 a month, a year, whatever it is to be a part of it, you're very, very welcome. There is a card that's available at the back of the church. And your help is gratefully appreciated. For those of you who would like to go to the Holy Land, that would be Ireland. <laughs> I'm going in September. I'm going in September. And it's, uh, yeah, I'd love to call it a bit of a pilgrimage, but really it's Ireland, so it's more of a spiritual journey because there is alcohol involved. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you. But on September 18th, we leave to go to Ireland and we have a priest with us. So we've Mass every day in the cathedrals in Ireland. And we'll have our first Mass in Dublin, Belfast and then go across to Knock. And we also go to Ballantubber Abbey. I'm a big promoter of Ballantubber Abbey because Ballantubber Abbey has had Eucharistic adoration since the year 412. Continuous Eucharistic adoration. It's something Ireland is very proud of and it's a bit of a weekend in Ireland. And it's just 25 minutes outside of Knock. But keep that in mind if you're ever going to Ireland. And then I'm going to go on a pilgrimage. At the same time, we're taking four days to go from Dublin into um, Magicoria, Croatia. And uh, so if you'd like to come, you are very, very welcome. That trip leaves in September. I have only six seats available on that tour. And, um, but anyway, you're very welcome. Next July, I'll be going on a cruise. Every year I take a cruise. Why do I take a cruise? Because it's a wonderful family time. We have cruise, we have mass every day, we have a little bit of adoration and then we have inspirational talks tonight. Our cruise next year in July will be from Baltimore to Bermuda. And the following year will be Eastern Caribbean. Okay? The good news about some of my cruises, children are free under the age of 12. Under the age of 16, they're 99 dollars. So it's quite good, it's really great. So a family of four on average can go on a cruise for a week for around $649. Anyway, more details available on that uh, uh, trip. Um, I'm going to leave you with this song, but I'm going to leave you with the fact that one of my greatest people that I've ever met, and I've had the opportunity to see for many people, uh, yes, I've been lucky enough to be in the White House under different presidents. Uh, I've sung with Maureen O'Hara. I've had a chance to be with Charlton Heston. Gregory Peck was another great guy. In fact, the night I entertained Gregory Peck, he was in LA, and he said, all the things I ever wanted to be known for was just to be a good father. That's cool. He's buried in Los Angeles Cathedral. They converted to Catholicism later in life. Also, um, Many people say, well, what are the highlights? I said, some of those are great highlights, but two of the greatest people that I've ever had the chance of singing for was our Holy Father, John Paul II, and indeed, Mother Teresa. And Mother Teresa had actually the most profound effect on me. I had the opportunity to be here three separate times and singing for her twice. But Mother Teresa really taught me a life lesson about the importance of changing one person's life. That's what it's about. It's not about numbers. It's about taking it upon ourselves to make the commitment every day to walk closer with Christ under the leadership of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. 
and take that commitment to bring Christ to our workplace, to our families, and make the commitment every day. A lot of us, as Catholics, we have that 52-hour relationship with Jesus Christ. We come on Sunday, and we take the box, and we think we're done. If I was to go home tonight and tell my wife in the morning, honey, I got a great idea. I'm going to spend 52 hours with you this year. I promise you that relationship will fall apart. <laughs> and that is the same with our relationship with Jesus Christ. We have to commit ourselves every day, not taking it for granted. It's asking ourselves, where does God want me to bring him today? If we can be that beacon, it is one person at a time. So I ask you to ask yourselves throughout uh, the next week, what's God asking me to do to bring Christ to our community, our parish? Ask yourself where you're plugged in as much as you can be. I ask you to take that challenge in prayer. At the end of the day, it's not about doing it my way. It is about doing it God's way. And that's really the most important thing in life is to find out what God's will is for you. The divine will will bring you peace, understanding. It will give you a greater sense of purpose. And that's what this song is about. It's about not doing it your way. It's doing it God's way. <coughs> May God bless all of you. Thank you so much for having us.
Thank you, James. Put your hands together to James.